Today, we are still judging you, and maybe your plots. The hype train is departing from Platform Carbine. I don't talk to my exes, but a Wildstar will be. And account bounds or I can't buy. All that and so much more on this week's episode of Geeks of Nexus. A world forged in conflict. Claimed as homeland by the exiles. Conquered as territory by the Dominion. There is only one whose words we can trust. Geeks of Nexus. That's right, and welcome to episode 15 of Geeks of Nexus. It is Sunday, the 16th of August, 2015, and today is very special. Joining me, I'm the, I'm the host now. We kicked him out. <laughs> Forget her. No, sh you're supposed to be quiet. You're gone. You're Sorry. Out. But joining me instead, you'll prefer this guy, trust me. It's our special guest, Beholter, from Wildcast. How's it going, dude? Good, it's going good. Thanks for having me on. Hey. No worries, man. It's a pleasure for you, you know, for us to have you here. Um, still here. Still it'll be nice heard, to have uh, at I least heard one last episode that I was your fattest guest. It? <laughs> yeah. I'm your fattest guest. <laughs> I would say that. I, that was, just... I, I forgot about that. It's just unnecessary. Because I said you're a big star, and I realized it came out completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, there you go. Uh, also joining me is Dracas. Hello. There you go. Hello. Yep. I was. I made sure that your intro was significantly less important than others. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna first go off because I'm the most important host on the show with what I was doing this week. I was leveling up my engineer. I did a bit of streaming. Uh, a couple of people dropped in, so thank you so much for that. Awesome, keeping me company and keeping me talking. Otherwise, I'd just go like a silent mute. Um, <laughs> and someone gave me a special, mighty fancy suit that I'm wearing on my engineer, on my Granok. He's not wearing anything else with it. No gloves, no boots, Granok no legs. Suit, he doesn't need that. It's just this fancy pants chest piece. And that came from Beholter. So thank you so much, dude. I owe <laughs> you one now. You're very welcome. So I've insulted you and I owe you one now. This is going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as usual, let's go to Dracast. What, what happened in your week? Um, I've had a very good week in Wildstar, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm level 50 on my Esper, uh, so it's my second hey. level 50. I know you've only got one and you're still trying to level your engineer that you've gone yeah. back to. Yeah. I'm not going to rub that in anymore, but get yeah, to level 50. Yeah, you're going to dangle that carrot Yeah, I am, yeah, I am, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I've been going through the achievement with my wonderful guild, uh, Disaster Area, and they've been amazing this week. They've been so supportive with that. And yes, the achievement process is so much easier when you have a nice guild to help you through. So uh, I got the adventures done, got gold on all of them apart from um, one of them. Uh, I even managed to pug one of them and get gold, which is, is unheard of. Wow. Um, Siege of Tempest Refuge, gold on a pug. Oh yeah. How did like, that happen? I don't know, <laughs> I think it's just that one. That one's really easy. That was the one I did last week as well. Well, funny enough, we were having a uh, conversation with them, um, with Kate, one of the, the guild master, guild mistress. And, uh, and she had a horrible time pugging that particular adventure, so she was a bit annoyed I went straight in and got cold with it. Um, but there you go. <laughs> uh, so I got my adventures sorted, and then we went into dungeons last night and managed to get all them done as well. So All of them? All of them. Oh my God. Everything's done. Uh, I've done all the solo quests, and now I've just got to kill the world bosses, which is just, you know, time and patience and getting people together. You're actually so. progressing in this game. That's ludicrous. Know, right, enough from you. <laughs> For Halter, my main man. You know, <laughs> pick me up, dude. I've been doing nothing this week. Please tell me you've been doing nothing as well. I've been doing nothing as well. My yes. computer died, so I've had nothing to do anything <laughs> on. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, your, it's your been sad unit, in this right? household. <laughs> it's wow. what? 
your power unit went, right? I heard. Yeah, my power unit went, but oh, I finally man. fixed it the other day, so it's back up and running right next to me. Awesome. And um, after that, pretty much all I've been working on is getting every class up to level 15 and parking them in a housing plot so I could wait for free to play to go live. Very good that's idea. That's what's happening, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's why I've been slacking. It's been for a clever reason, I promise. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's time to move on to our shout-outs and calls to action. Uh, you just did a little one there, Kim, but I should follow that up. It's for Disaster Area. Again, our awesome guild. Uh, that's www.disasterarea.engine.com. They're on Jabbit EU where we're playing, so if you're looking for an awesome guild, dive in. Give us a shout, and we'll be happy to have you. Um, also, following on from last week, we had the Construction Championship Clash Extreme housing competition, which is being hosted by yours truly. Um, also, it was shouted out on Wildcast. Thank you so much, Bahota, for that. You're very um, welcome. We want as many people to dive in as possible, so I'm just mentioning it again in case you didn't hear it last week. We got that housing competition coming up. Go to uh, the main forums, uh, the Wildstar forums. There's a tiny URL link, uh, .com slash G-O-N-C-C-C. So follow that link, enter. You'll get plat prizes, decor items, and all sorts of goodies. Got a special announcement as well yeah. on that this week. Yeah. Because uh, Ida Stinia has agreed to be our one of our special judges. Hey. Our independent judges. So, wow. Um, those of you who know the uh, the lovely French person that is I just didn't you? Does yes. his little machine and everything else, uh, yeah. and likes his little housing plot. So uh, he's going to come along and be our special judge. And also, oh. Wild uh, Star Core has uh, given us some codes for some fancy pants suits uh, for our runners hey. up prizes. Oh, cool! So Fantastic. even more extras loot. Yeah, I'm all for that. It's all about the loot. Um, what better person to show us around housing plots than I Destinia himself? Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. There you go then. Uh, okay, cool. So I think we should be moving on to the news. News. Hey, paper, paper, read all about it. Hey, Grano, hey, big bouncer, eat some of this nose over here. Hey, 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 chewer, this broadsheet's bigger than you. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, guys, it's only 60 gold. Get back here. News of the week. Okay, so uh, yeah, first item of the day, uh, Wildstar dropped a free-to-play teaser, little trailer up on the tubes of you. <laughs> it happened just as we were doing the last podcast. <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah, as we were doing the last podcast, we turned it off, and I was like, "Oh, Kim, look at this! Oh my god!" Uh, <laughs> because it was so hyped up, it was amazing. Have, have you seen this this trailer? The yes. Holter? Oh, I have. It, well, it looks you... amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of, I've written here in the show notes, it's kind of been reminiscent of the first trailer they did mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that they ever made with the game. Uh, they got the, the sort of graphics updated uh, from what they had back in 2007. And again, some of the community has been miffed by this. <laughs> you always have that. You can't please everybody. On... There's always going to be somebody who's bent out of shape about every little thing. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this time it's like... Well, I was going to say 50% of the community, but more like 30% of the community. <laughs> <laughs> but all the Dominion are angry because it focuses on the exiles again. Um, uh, so, Kim, what did you think of the trailer? I was quite happy because I, you you know, you know I love the exiles. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the fluffy Aurens. You and your Aurens. Yeah. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I liked it. It's all all about the hype. It's like we were saying on Twitter afterwards. Everyone got excited about it. People were waiting for some kind of trailer uh, in relation to the free to pay, the beta and everything else. And this is what when we got it. So it felt like we were starting to get on the hype train a little bit. And we're hoping that you know, if we in a couple of weeks, we'll get something even bigger. Yeah, well, this is something funny. I picked up a, uh, on it in the official forums, I believe it was. But some people think that this little trailer is part of something bigger. Mm. As in the actual clip itself. Okay. What do you guys think well, about that? Well, do you think well, Wildstar are bringing out anything? Oh, don't, well, have I missed something? I, yeah, I'm wondering if I missed something now. I'm wondering if I missed something too. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> what do you know but, that we don't? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Promise me. <laughs> promise, promise me? I promise you. Um, yeah, but some people just think um, that the, the production quality was so nice and so, so hypey hype that this has to be for something nicer. But... Pff, 
I think, you know, they've got some tinfoil hats on. <laughs> um, maybe they've just got a new animator. Uh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh, but it was amazing, and I, and I brought it up because moving towards free-to-play, we know that the player base is low at the moment. Uh, there's no getting away from it. The PvP servers in particular are dead, and we'll be talking about that later in particular. Um, but I think this is really what Carbine needs to do to try and push this game out as much as possible. They need to draw as many players in, and I hope that this is just the first step of a big, big marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We need more trailers. We love trailers. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you reckon they can do, Beholter, to um, build the hype up a little bit? Um, well, I think advertising. It, mm -hmm. There's been like no television advertising for no. this game that I've seen. Um, and I think, you know, with hopefully this tra trailer, they'll start to shop around, even on websites and stuff, and, uh, and, and get the hype going a little more. Because mm -hmm. it's nice to have a trailer, but if it's not out there so everybody can see it, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, so. it's, it's interesting because within the game, obviously, we get all of it anyway. You know, when we're on right, Twitter yeah. with all our friends, we, we find out about things within sort of seconds of it happening. But if you're not, um, if you're nothing to do with the game, how do you know this is happening? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you don't need to sell it to me. I'm already playing it. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I doubt they'll be able to sort of compete with uh, WoW's, uh, what was it, New York City Times Square uh, yeah. <laughs> mammoth yeah. statue structure. It's, Blizzard's it's, a slightly larger company. Was it a taxi with a, a, a it was a taxi, <laughs> wasn't it? With a, was it Thor's hammer in it? If I remember um, rightly, or something similar. Uh, with um, Og Ogrims? Ogrims? Yes. Yes. Axe, yeah. The axe. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that that's why I think Carbine don't have the sort of big tools that they need to get big marketing <clears throat> campaigns going. You need to get the cosplayers out. You need to get the co cosplayers out. <laughs> get the square. cosplayers out. And just <laughs> wheel <laughs> them out. Just shove them out the doors. And go, yeah. There you go. Come out it. Thanks. That's my yeah. idea. Anyway. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, we'll write that in to Carbine and see if they take it. Okay, moving job. on. Sorry? I might get a job on the back of the idea. That, that it was a good idea. <laughs> Give it to you. Our second piece of news is that the free-to-play beta is opening up to X subscribers um, on the 11th of August, so just five days or so before recording this podcast. Uh, wait to free -er? Whitefur on Whitfer. I think it's Whitefire. Whitefire, oh, you that see? That makes more sense. She, I think it was a she, um, she said on Twitter to Papilicious, CLB Sunshine and Bardic, I think it's a huge missed opportunity not opening beta to lapsed subscribers who may be tempted again. Mm -hmm. uh, and she got a reply from... Uh, CRB Sunshine himself. Herself. Herself. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I just got this male white privilege thing going on. And it works against me. She, she replied, Have no fear. We agree. It's in the works for the coming weeks. And it has arrived. Um, you can go onto the Wild Star Free to Play website and sign up. Uh, and if you're lucky in the first or second wave, of invites, you can get invited to the free-to-play beta, uh, even if you're not a current subscriber. So what do you guys think about that? Uh, I still think it's a bit of a missed opportunity, personally, um, because the ex-subscribers basically have to do the same thing that non-subscribers have to do, which is go and sign up for the beta and wait for an email. Um, right. Whereas the ex-subscribers are people that are interested in your game originally, they're people that might want to come back. So. I would think maybe the, you know, a mass email to all of them saying, "Hi, here's a free invite straight away into the into the beta." That's what I think they should have done. All right. That's my two cents. Right. I think that even if they um, even if they gave ex subscribers priority, it would help out mm -hmm. a little bit because there are people that have seen the game already and and they want to lure those people back. So. Mm -hmm. You know, giving them priority to close beta would be good. You know, maybe have them come in first and then all the new folks after that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I like that idea. Exactly. I mean, um, the first wave of sort of opening up this, the, the PDR to test this free to play model was just sort of bug fixes, fixes wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. kind of why I think it was opened up only to 
people that were current subscribers. Because yeah. Carbine will know that those are people that are already on the forums, already talking about the game. So they're most likely to report bugs, I think. Uh, but now I think it's all ironed out. I mean, I haven't heard any particular reports saying that it's, you know, horrifically broken and never going to work and bugs galore. Yeah. Uh, so I think, yeah, Carbine should just open the floodgates right now and go like, you know what? Anyone out there, just jump on in this beta. You know, we want a stress test. We want to, uh, you know, show you how far the game's come. Um, because as we know, I think I'm not alone in saying this, uh, the game right now is in the position that it should have been in a year ago on release. Mm -hmm. I think if it was released in the state it's in now compared to then, it would have been way more successful and probably even one of the best contenders for, you know, being a big market dominating MMO. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, oh, but I'm, I'm just on my bandwagon right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Get on your yeah. bandwagon. Is there anything you guys want to tell on the end of that? Have I stirred up any big argumentative bones in your body? Not really. No. Not really. No. Um, I just thought we've all said it. You know, <laughs> we need to get the ex-subscribers back. We need to get new people back. We need to get people excited, and I think we need to get them in playing so you can see how far the game's come. Right. And um, and then get the new people in. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing, still seeing on Twitter and things like that that people are still excited. But even people that haven't played played it, they want to come in. They want to play Wild Star. So. Get them yeah. in. Did you have anything to say there, Bolter? I saw you leap forwards. Well, I mean, you know, I, I just hope that the free-to-play beta it kicks off sooner rather than later. It's right. we're, we're to exactly. the point now where it's like, you know, you want to get people in. And I hope that that's where they're going to put their marketing push. Once they start opening the beta up, yeah. push the marketing for even the beta. Um, so people can come in and try it and get excited about it. And when it goes free-to-play, boom, you got an instant audience. Yeah, absolutely. They had that cinematic a while ago they released of um, the librarian hosting that disco party. The caretaker with The caretaker, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, the caretaker. Librarian. Yeah. <laughs> I know so much about this game. <laughs> <laughs> the main character. I'm almost He, he holds a book. He must be a librarian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the ethereal woman. Uh, Drusera. Dinosaur era. Yeah. <laughs> Dinosaur right. era, yes. Dinosaur era, yeah. And the, the librarian. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad we've got this nailed. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to say something before I went on to the next news round, but I forgot it. See, so we'll see this is what round. happens to me when I'm hosting. Because yeah. you have time to think about things, your mind goes, and then you, then you just have this blank moment. And now I know it's not just me. Well, it's just you. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Drop three news. The free-to-play beta cash shop with account-bound woes. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, this is, it's kind of, kind of flames from the forum complaining, one of our segments, but not really. So I thought it belonged in the news. Uh, obviously, we've, ah, I remember what it was, Kim. It's come back. Shut your mouth. Hey. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say, if you want to catch any of the actual PTR news, we covered it last week. So go back and watch that podcast oh, yes. before we move on to this bit. Because yes. this is kind of talking about the PTR news and the drops that came with it. But yeah. Or oh, Wildcast, because so, they talked about it too. Or oh, Wildcast, yeah. <laughs> That's right. first, then Wildcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They probably go into a lot more depth than we do. They actually know we just, what they're No, we about. just wing it. We, we're usually shooting from the hip. We don't know what we're talking oh, about half the time. I don't know. So. I don't know. <laughs> well, at least you know the main names of the characters. I can't say that much. But yeah. Uh, so talking about the cash shop in the PTR this is at the moment um, with the free-to-play model, uh, Cheetos mascot TM, good name, awesome from Reddit, name. said the mounts you buy from the cash shop are character bound, even though you claim them from the account inventory. Rather confusing process. Also, the mounts should be account bound. We're looking for more account bound items in Wildstar, not less. Smiley face. A relaunch in 2015 is going to want to keep up with all the account bound things its competitors provide. A good example, the costumes you buy from the cash shop you can unlock are account-wide. Uh, more PTR coin would be nice, so we can try to break the various items in the cash shop. Uh, was unfortunately not able to test its functionality much as, I'd, as much as I'd have liked to, sorry. Hopefully nothing in there is broken since people will be paying real money for it. So, he or she is kind of concerned that 
on the cash shop, uh, there's all these mounts, there's all these costumes, and at the moment in other MMOs, like what, uh, like WoW, you know, uh, like, um, <laughs> Star Wars. SWOTOR, that's it, SWOTOR, I know the <laughs> acronym, but never remember the full name. See, mind blank moment. Yeah, Same. they have account bound items. Uh, when 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 you purchase things, it goes across all your characters, and so it's very nice for collectors and stuff. Um, but in in Wildstar, that's not the case. Some of the things are account bound, and some of them are not. Even if you take them out of your account inventory, just like mm -hmm. Cheeto's mascot said. So, what do you guys think about that? Why is it like that? Can, I, ho best? can I hop in there first? Yeah, because I've already got a bone to pick with this one. Mm -hmm. And that's with my Snarflinks mount. Yeah. It's already live in the game. Mm -hmm. the, the mount that you get with the uh, promo, with the box promotion. So you buy yeah. a box and you get a chance to get the Snarflinks mount, the Glitty, Glitty Cruiser, or the Marauder costume set. Well, I was lucky enough to get the Snarflink, Snarflinks mount, and I can only have it on one character. Yep. Which is really yeah. irritating because it's something I've had to, you know, pay money for. Yeah. Should be account bound I think and I have the same issue with anything in the in the um in the shop in the in the in game shop if you buy a mount with real money it should mm. be account bound you think so yes i think so ah oh, that's what we're discussing here but Holter, you got any opinions i think that uh it's probably going to be one of those things that's coming yeah. um i think that moving towards it probably is difficult Mm -hmm. because it changes i mean you know I, I don't know how some of these things are coded in the game mm -hmm. but i have a feeling that going from uh an account bound system going from a per character system to an account bound system is not the easiest thing mm -hmm. so uh i think we'll probably see it i'm hoping we don't see it until i sell all of the things that i've gotten <laughs> <laughs> so you get rid of your garage filled of boxes yeah i was just gonna say to kim before yeah kim you, it's character bound because you know you got one box now nine more to go i've got to go exactly. to every other character but, yeah. then, but then when we got the um the deluxe edition everything yeah. we got on there was account bound okay. wasn't it it was account bound yeah. so yes. they, they must kind of have the system there available to be able to put it in the game yeah yeah, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think it's a, it's a matter of of uh, new items that you get that are are designated as either character or account bound. It's mm. probably setting up a new system that looks at all of your characters and says stuff. all of these things are on all of your characters. Mm. Mm. Like when they completely revamped the Hollow Wardrobe for uh, account wide, yeah. it looks completely different mm. than it did before. Yeah, that's true. Fair point. Uh, Fandle on uh, Reddit, another user, uh, seconded uh, Cheeto's mascot's motion. He says he brought it up a, a few months ago on the general, for general forums. Sorry. Uh, he said, or she said, <laughs> Carbine will actually sell <laughs> more of an item if it's account bound. Why? Because if I'm itching for an impulse buy, I'm 100% more likely, scientific fact, to purchase something that I know. <laughs> I can use regardless of which character I'm on. I'll hesitate to buy something that can only be used on one character, because what if I want to play another character? Hesitation is the last thing you want when showing off those nice glittery shinies in the cash shop. <laughs> crab Ein, please crab do the right thing. <laughs> Did they actually put Crab in? They I said to, Crab Ein. I want to know what scientific <laughs> research they used. <laughs> yeah, that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call BS on that scientific fact. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it was a really large sample size of one. <laughs> it's scientific fact. Based confirmed. on my scientific research of me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we've kind of already dis discussed then. I'm going over these notes, if it will. Uh, I think it w Oh, yeah, I haven't given my opinion. Go on, then. Give your <laughs> the opinion. The most important one, yeah, guys. Well, well, well. Get out of my way. <laughs> I think... Um, obviously, Kim, you already know. I'm a massive mount collector from yeah. WAP. So, the interesting thing, I, I was thinking about it all today whilst, you know, uh, I was drilling up these show notes, and I was thinking, I was interested in collecting mounts before they went account bound on WoW, but the real drive was afterwards. As soon as accounts were announced, sorry, what? As soon as mounts <laughs> were announced to go account bound, 
I was like, whoa, awesome. I'm going to go farm as many as I can. Like that drove me to get more mounts. And so I kind of agree here with uh, Fandal. Uh, I think if you can access mounts on every single character, players are going to be much more driven to get every single mount. And that's kind of more work for Carbine, because when you consider the cash shop, they're going to need to go to the artists and go to the developers and create more mounts individually. But I think overall, it could result in more profit. Well, think about it. What yeah. is better than if you have uh, someone who's leveling up an alt, uh, mm -hmm. especially when it goes free to play, and you've got all these new people down there at low levels, and you're down there when you're level level three, and you get out this amazing glitter kitty or something that's in the in the shop and people are like whoa that's an amazing mount where can i get that and they're aha uh -huh. well uh -huh. you know you need to inspire these new players they need to go out and get these mounts and buy them so <laughs> make it account bound you know i'm saying yeah <laughs> inspire capitalism yeah <laughs> awesome okay so with that, I think we'll move on to our law segment of the oh, week. Oh, this is exciting this week. Is it? Yes, I'm excited oh, for this. Okay, well then I'm new hyped. Development. Um, yeah, this week we're starting a new round of law. Uh, I guess you could say uh, going into some different stories. You can find this on the official website, uh, wildstar-online.com/slash-uk/slash-stories/slash-voyage of the nomad. That's the important part there. Uh, <laughs> so that's what we're going into today. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Voyage of the Nomad, part one. From the glare filling his helmet, Captain Sonodo figured he had 13 minutes before the exploding nebula over his shoulder baked him and the 400 people on the other side of the meter-thick vibranium hull to a crisp. On the upside, the view wasn't bad. Cap! First Officer Veska sounded as if she were right beside him, scaling the hull of the unpowered starship on the edge of space. We need to hurry. Crint. He looked down at the tech officer far below him. The kid had no business being out here. A hard-working NG, a farmer stock, whose father had wept with pride at the nomad's christening ceremony. But the repair drone was on the fritz again, and Shade was dead. Sonoda had promised to take care of the kid, to whatever extent such terms even applied in deep space. Now. He joined the cables strung between his fingers, while simultaneously far below him, Crint flipped the switch, diverting the emergency power back where it belonged before it could fry their core. Nomad shuddered. Tongues of blue flame choked from the boosters, silhouetting Crint's spindly outline against the brightness as he began clambering upwards. Sonoda flicked the arc welder off. The panel slid shut. Done, he said. We're coming in. His luck had held. Again. As the Cassian civilization's first space travelers, to have even survived this long was a victory. Miraculously, it had been a mere year since the launch of their mission. In that time, they'd seen more wonders than they'd dreamt possible in a single lifetime. Plasma-based organisms, awed that meat-like beings such as humans, could exist, let alone master space travel. Volcanic eruptions, severe enough to dent the ship's hull from orbit, granite humanoids of consummate martial prowess, massive dark matter worms that preyed on black holes, machine intelligences that piloted worlds like dragsters, jellyfish the size of whales that Nomad was thankfully too minuscule to entice. Entities that defied description. All fascinating, none sufficient. Sonoda propelled himself along the rungs set into the hull towards the hatchway. Captain, 
Stand by, said Science Officer Thackford in his other ear. For the Nomad's new Science Officer, this was an unusually loquacious utterance. We're picking up an energy sig. It's curious. A cycling radiation bandwidth unlike anything we've run across. Ten degrees off your starboard. Sonada resisted the urge to look over his shoulder at the looming whirls of nebulae. Show me in ten minutes. He bunched his shoulders in preparation to leap aboard into the decompression chamber, yawning open beside him. It's cycling over a billion ergs a second. Sonada froze. Did you fall down and die? Oh god. Why would they even put that in the game? Carbine? I'm so angry I could just... I could just... I could just post on the forums! Flames from the forums. That's right, welcome to Flames from the forums. Hope you enjoyed the, the lore there, but we're moving on. And my There's cameo. Discuss. No, my and, cameo. and your cameo, yeah. <laughs> Kim was in that one. Don't know if you noticed. If you mm. didn't, go back, watch again. Give us more money. My PayPal <laughs> will be in the show notes. <laughs> Moving on. Money? What, we get paid? <laughs> <laughs> Gunik from the forums posted on the 7th of August uh, at 2.30 a.m. Dude, go to bed. <laughs> What's wrong with you? He said, hello, guys. Can you please explain to me something? I just came back after a long, long pause. I paid a subscription <laughs> and entered the game. I used character level 34 and already was into the main city. And I see that there is no people on the server. <laughs> I mean totally clean server. No near bank, no near quest givers, etc. I took my bike and started to ride around the city and no people around. I opened chat and asked a few questions, and nobody answered me. <laughs> Same picture on a low-level locations. So, the question is, where is all the people? Question mark, question mark. Do I making something wrong? Question mark. How come all people left, or maybe there is some other main city? The everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> then why nobody answered me in chat? Please explain. Big thanks. P.S. Forgot to say that I am on a PvP server. And that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> that right the problem? there. <laughs> you go, you that's go ahead. That's the first problem. And the second problem is, it's 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is why I picked this out. This is fantastic. <laughs> There's two problems. Everyone else is in bed and you're on the PvP server. I don't know what, I don't know what happened. Something happened when the mega servers merged and mm. it's the same as far as i'm aware in on the north american servers as well as on the eu servers nobody's in the pvp servers no everyone's nope. just gone to the pve servers and then of course you have problems like this where people go on the forums and go where is everybody on the pvp forums and everyone goes oh there's no one there needs to get the free transfer and come over to the pve server hence this guy will now jump over to the pve server and that's another less person on the pvp servers yeah it's like a vicious uh -huh. circle I mean, it's an obvious problem. Do you guys have any solutions? Um, Posing this to you guys, you know, do you think you can do it better than Carbine? Are you going to step up to the plate? I don't I mean... Think, Sorry, go on, Walter. Well, I think eventually they're probably either... They're going to have to do one of two things. They're going to have to um, start really pushing some kind of incentive for people to go back on the PvP server which I don't know if they're going to do because <laughs> uh, it seems a little unbalanced or they're just going to have to cut their losses and do one humongous server um, and more than likely the people that like open world PvP are going to get hosed in that instance mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's probably not going to be a popular decision if it goes that way but right now yeah it's, it's rough over on the PvP servers it's tough, yeah. isn't it? Because Sparky, you wanted to be on a PvP server, didn't you? I, yeah. When we were leveling, I mean... when you came back and we were leveling up the little lady characters together, <laughs> yeah. you were like, "Why can't I stab this this person in the back?" Yeah, What's I going saw. On? S I saw some. We were were we playing Dominion then? No, we were on our we were new on our exiles. exile characters. Yeah, so I saw on. a Dominion guy run past when I was leveling. 
And as I was, you know, stabbing this, you know, boar or whatever, I was like, oh, hello, hello, <laughs> over here, who's this? Well, 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 we'll be caught here then. And I tried to creep up behind him and chuck a few spells in his back and nothing happened. Yeah, and I turned to you, Kim, and I was like, what the hell, Kim? Why can't I kill this person that's on the opposing faction? Because we're on a PvE server, Sparky. Oh, I don't <laughs> care for the PvE servers, Kim. That's just excuses. I want blood, gore, gold, and loot. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who have similar thoughts to you, Sparky. Yeah. And it kind of feels like, at the moment, there's not a lot of wild star love for PvPers. Yeah. Unfortunately, sad face. I'd agree. I think if I were to fix this, I'd merge everyone onto one big server, like you said, Beholder. But I'd probably make the majority of zones, probably starting about level 20 and going up to 50, I'd make them neutral zones, kind of like you had in WoW, where mm -hmm. everyone is automatically PvP tech. And I think that would really reinvigorate, P you know, world PvP. Uh, I think new players would still be safe in their starting zones that are, you know, unique for them and safe for them, and it's just PvE tagged. Uh, how would you guys feel about that? Would you be okay being PvP tagged in <laughs> mid zones, mid to high zones? <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't come a wimp, and I generally, <laughs> and I generally play a healer, so uh, <laughs> I generally play squishy classes, so I'd probably not be happy about that. No? The whole time? <laughs> I'd be absolutely fine for it, with it. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> we need to group up, man, and go, go kill some newbies. <laughs> Sounds good. Go gank them with the graveyard <laughs> until they rage quit. It could give people an option, though, to go around with their PvP flag on all the time. Yeah. And then you know, they, they're highlighted on a map or have some kind of flag so that other PvPers can see that that person yeah. is available so, to be So ganked. you want them to turn their PvP flag on and also have a big arrow pointing yeah. down at their <laughs> Hello! Head. Yeah. Here yeah. I am! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> we know what I mean though. Really some some easy way for it to be able to tell. So you know you can go yeah. get that person. Uh, awesome. Stalkers would have a field day. Yes they would. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just sitting there in the shadows just waiting for someone to run along and then... <laughs> It's the oh. curse of every MMO, isn't it? The stealth class <laughs> that can go around in PvP zones. Good yeah. God. Can yeah. we just delete all stealth abilities from now on? Nope. I'm sure the stalkers won't mind. <laughs> well, your main's a stalker. I know it's on the mm. Dominion. Is there any level 50 character? This is the thing, though. I, I kind of, my engineer's kind of my main now. Oh, you've fallen in love with the engineer. That's sweet. I have. I really have. I'm really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, anyway, we diverge. <laughs> uh, moral of the story, Gunik, don't log on to a dead server at a dead time. It'll be dead. It'll be dead. Even, <laughs> even the PvE server will be fe you know, relatively mm, yeah. quiet at 2.30 in the morning. Exactly, exactly. There will be some people about, but uh, not many. Right. Don't well, you. I hope you guys brought your dancing shoes, because we're moving on to add-on of the week. Woo! <laughs> and you'll see that fantastic link in a bit. In 300 yards, turn right. Mm, no, no. I know a shortcut up here. Please turn around when possible. No, I know this way is faster. I'm an advanced GPS stabilizing quantum powered universal guidance system with bonus sarcasm and condescending modules built in, you lumbering oaf. Please follow the damn directions or face destruction. Mm, these add ons are starting to piss me off. This week's add on of the week segment. Hey, hey! We love the add-ons! Uh, it's Disco Telegraphs, and that will sound familiar to you, Bahota. It does! It sounds very familiar. <laughs> it sounds really me. familiar. because we two thumbs ripped up it off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we had it on your podcast! Idea, like, your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> on Wildcast, the lads were talking about lads. You like that? There you go. There's <laughs> a do. British word for you. <laughs> the lads were talking about Disco Telegraphs. Um, would you like to... Tell us what this is about then, Bahota, because I don't have it. Uh, so Disco Telegraph, you ha have you seen it? Yeah. At least? Yes. I've, I've, I've seen, well, yeah, kind of. But you go ahead. I've, I've kind of seen it. Basically, it's an acid yeah. trip for Wildstar. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it turns all enemy telegraphs into disco colors, alternating disco colors, um, <laughs> which is fantastic. Uh, you know, I use it in Raid all the time. 
I have people who are like, oh, I didn't see that telegraph. I'm dead now. Blah. Well, go get the sat on and you will not miss any telegraph that is in the game at all because it's going to give you a seizure. I was going to say, warning for, you know, any, any you know, s troubled sighted people that this is, is it particularly bright? I mean, it, 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 it uses the same colors that are in the game. So they're really the colors that you can change telegraphs to anyway, but this right. quickly alternates between, you know, a few random colors. Um, so it's not any brighter than any other telegraph that's in there. It's just uh, okay. rapidly changing. Right. Um, I have a question. You've used this in RAID. Yeah. Yeah. Did it affect... <laughs> uh, do you have any lag or anything, or was it all right? Because I notice it does say on, the, on their write-up that it is optimized uh, for performance. But after um, the problems that Worldstar had with um, Costume Manager, I had my doubts, so I thought I'd ask the question. I haven't noticed any lag, and I think the reason is um, this works on the client side, not on the server side. So, mm -hmm. so Costume Manager changed your costume and everybody could see it, so it's mm -hmm. translating that information to the server. Yeah. This just changes your personal telegraphs for enemies, so it's only happening on your machine. So I haven't noticed any lag myself. It's, it's really just going to use your own machine's system resources. Awesome. Mm. All right, so don't attempt if you have a wooden box for a PC. No. <laughs> no. Right. Okay. Good That's good. That's answered my question because now I'm going to go and download it. Awesome. No problemo. Because I do find the telegraphs hard to see sometimes. It depends on what floor you've got underneath you, really. Yeah. 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 But even red is a bit awkward, so I'm going to go and download I this. I used to use white pretty consistently, and I thought I found it stood out on quite a few things. And then we walked into Datascape, and there were some floors there that was just like, nope, God can't see stuff. Oh uh, no! Uh, do you know what someone needs to make? Is an add-on kind of like this that will just, you know, have you? Do you like create much stuff? Have you ever been on the Adobe website and seen the color wheels? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. Where you drag it around and it's like, well, this is the chromatic color wheel and yep. you drag it around and it'll give you the opposite color. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to make an add-on that depending on what color the floor is, it'll do the opposite uh, color of your telegraph. Color. Automatically, like a chameleon. Like a chameleon. The opposite, the opposite to a chameleon. That would probably lag your system out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would destroy everything, Sparky. <laughs> Shut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Um... We've got to the end of the show notes. Gosh, is that it? This, is that we've gone from the one extreme to the other? How, how, did, how long did that take? Last week we had uh, an hour and a half, and this week it's been like uh, forty-five minutes. My God! Go us! Look My train wrecks are fast. <laughs> it's like one minute we were just going to London, and the next it was brick wall. It's just been fine. Um, I've been I've quite enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been quite it's quite. It's different to last week, having yeah. something to talk about, but not like overkill. Yeah, all it's, right. It's all well, right. I have a feeling that in the next in a few weeks' time, we're going to have the same problem. It's uh, we're going to have too much to talk about. Yeah. This is why Wildcast only do a monthly podcast and not a weekly podcast. Exactly. <laughs> they've, they've got it right. They've got it nailed. We try to go bi-weekly, but that almost never happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would well, still you better. <clears throat> I was going to move on to tweets of the week, but we don't have any. Everyone's just talking about the PTR still. Yeah. Everyone interested in the PTR. If you want to know anything about the PTR, go on Twitter. Yeah. But also, if you don't want to, if, you know, help us out here, if you want to tweet into the show, you can. Using the ever so familiar uh, hashtag to you, AskGON. You can ask us anything. Ask me what pants I'm wearing. I don't care. Um, but yeah, we, we don't have any tweets today, so nothing to, to discuss there. So. I guess I'm just going to move the shindig on to the outro. Yeah. 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 Okay. Holt, unless yeah. Holt has anything to say. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Do, wait. <laughs> do you have any news that we don't know about? Uh, about? I'm not allowed to say. Uh, oh, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's working behind the scenes, guys. I know some things that. Whoa. People are going to be excited for, but they're going to happen later on, and that's all I can say. Oh, oh. He's holding back on us. <laughs> Come on. He's holding back on us. What a tease. <laughs> all right. Well, that has been it 
for Geeks of Nexus this week. Sorry it was short. We'll make it a bit longer next week, Kim? Yeah, why not? Cool. All right. Um, and we need to start our housing visits soon. Mm -hmm. So probably keep an eye out for that, any players that have entered. I'm sure we'll probably get in contact with you within, within the next week. Also, yeah, or when the, uh, the, yeah, when the, when the, yeah, if I can't speak, when the uh, competition ends, yeah. uh, the closing date, you've got a while still to go. Uh, Was it 24th? 4th of September. 4th, sorry. 4th of September. So once the 4th of September comes around, uh, then we'll get in touch with people and start doing the visits. All oh, right, we're starting after. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, we've got okay, two weeks. so ignore that. Yeah, uh, let everyone, let everyone, weeks, let that? everyone enter first, and then, uh, cool. and then we'll, we'll and then get we'll on start. with that. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, if uh, if you have any questions or points of interest, uh, you can go to our website, epicgeeks.co.uk, or email us at geeksofnexus at gmail dot com. Uh, alternatively, there's our Twitter, geeks of at geeks of Nexus. Sorry, the outros are hard, aren't they, Spartan? It is hard. Especially <laughs> when, this is the first time I've even ever bothered reading it. <laughs> Before it's just been uh, na, 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 in the back of my, you know, my ears. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for listening. I'm not Drakus signing off with a smiley face and a wink because that's a lame thing to say. <laughs> Go out there with blood and gore and honor. That's what Sparky would say. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Beholter. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, if you don't listen to Wildcast already, listeners out there, you should be. Go check them out. They're a good bunch of lads, and they talk about wild stuff. It's been nice mixing up the uh, you know the Americas with the with the Europeans. With the Brits. It's, it's true. A bit of a uh, bit of mix up was good. Yeah, yeah, some Brits back to back once again. <laughs> good times. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for, for watching and goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this podcast is part of the Epic Geeks Network. To find out more about our other gaming podcasts, head to epicgeeks.co.uk. <laughs> Little bit of bonus content right now. I hope everyone that's that's listening is ready. Get your pens out, get your word documents up, and get ready to type and write. Because Beholter, right now, post show because we forgot it. I'll be honest. <laughs> he's going to read out a code. Uh, what, what what's it for, Beholter? I'll let you take the wheel. Uh, well, it's for a fancy pants jacket. Ooh. It's a Gamescom code Ooh. for a fancy pants jacket. And uh, let's just get into it. It's seven, one two five. Q Q P A two U five T D zero nine J Y T nine three. And it's gone. It's gone. First come, first serve. Already. So you need to be quick, people. <laughs> it's been right. When well, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> and if you got it, if you awesome. get it, yeah. Tweet out to uh, Geeks of Nexus and Wildcast and let us yeah. know uh, that you've received it and that you are a happy camper. By the way, this <laughs> that is for a uh, that is for the Jabit server. Uh, is it only redeemable on Jabit EU? No, for EU no. server, yes. EU. That is only fully well, redeemable. Pretty on much Jabbit. on Jabit because no one's on the PvP server. That's, so yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> okay. that's it. So there you go. That's that's for all people EU. For, for that it's mind. all about EU love. That's so, right. EU love. Nice. Awesome. Thank you for that, Beholder. You're very welcome. He's you're like Father Christmas. You I to try show, to be. You're just like <laughs> there you go. I mean you've already called me fat and jolly, so <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Cut. That's that's the podcast. Done. You can't go out better than that. <laughs>